going on, my friends? I wanted to get on here and talk about something real quick. Sorry about my phone. I got that weird phone holder. But I wanted to get on here and chit chat about something. I saw a video last night that was really good. It was about 39 minutes long. It was so insightful. Um, there's a channel I mentioned, I think I mentioned the other night. I, I follow a channel from time to time called The Fit RV. Like Getting Fit, F I T. The Fit RV. James and Stephanie probably by far do the best RV reviews that I've seen on the internet. They really do. They get detail with it. They, I like how they do it. They narrate it. They just, they're very good at it. Um, now, these guys are ambassadors of Winnebago, but this wasn't the point of this video. Um, they're probably going to be one of the first to get the new Winnebago Echo when it comes out. And that, that is, if you haven't seen it, that is a sweet RV. It really is. But he talked about the power systems. Like, these Winnebago Travados have these Volta systems. And uh, two of the Winnebagos, it'd be the Revel that's out. And this new Echo is going to have the Lithionic system. And I, those uh, systems were a lot more amazing than I thought they were. I'm telling you what. Um... I thought it was only like a couple hundred amp hours of battery. It was an all-in-one system for the Volta. No, you're talking 800 amp hours of battery. So that's 8,500. It's almost 800. So 8,500 watt hours of battery. Um, and if anybody knows how to factor that from amp hours to watt hours, all you got to do is your voltage times your amp hours gives your watt hours. Gives your watt hours, and I think you can divide the watt and the voltage. It's just like Ohm's law. Electricity is proportional, so you can you can go by amp hours or watt hours. It's your preference, depending on what you want to do. So, um, you can buy these systems on your own, and this is important too. You'll spend some money, but it's so well worth it. And I kind of thought mm, maybe I should have gotten one of those Volta systems uh, or a Lithionics. You know, you live and you learn. I mean, next fan I do, if I go all out, it might be that. I don't know. Um, but even if you don't buy one of these systems, his video talked about some things that are very helpful for you. And one is he talked about alternators. You've got to be very careful. And I have talked about this before. And the point of today, what I'm talking about is when you do the electrical in your vans, your RV, make sure that you have a good alternator in that vehicle. Now, with the alternator that comes with it, might charge 100 amp hours or something like that and you may get away with it for a while it still puts stress on that alternator it really does put stress on that alternator um you could undertow that alternator burn it up it could unfortunately it could start a fire you don't i mean you don't hear a lot of that under the hood of an uh, alternator but it happens um it could burn up your electrical in the vehicle um your wiring you use oh it's important but when i bought my van my ProMaster, I had RAM upgraded to the 220 amp, I think it was a 220 amp alternator. And it was so worth it because even their upgraded states RV ready alternator. And you, it, they do that because one, there's one reason. You need to have an alternator that's gonna be able to handle charging while you drive and, and doing the things it needs to do. So basically the alternator that I've got, it charges my 200 amp hour Ames battery in idle. It's strong enough, it does it well. Uh, depending on the electrical system, they say that the Volta systems won't charge at idle, but if you do, it does it high idle when it cranks automatically like the Voltas do. If you if you don't know about it, go let people show you what the Winnebago Travado Class Bs do. It will do it in high idle, but not all the time. The Lithionics will charge low idle, and it'll charge it while you're driving even more. Now, the, the point is, is you need to know if you get past 100 amp hours of battery, you know, a regular alternator is not going to be able to handle charging four or 500 amp hours of battery. You'll burn the alternator up, but you cause other damage as well. So be very careful on that. Please do. Um, I will tell you that, as you might not know, when you go alternator charging to a lithium ion battery you got to go to a charge controller now i use the renogy dcc 50s it's a 50 amp charge controller and my solar and my my um my alternator goes in that same charge controller it maxes at 50 amps it's not a bad thing guys because i've got 300 watts of solar if i'm not getting that i can get 300 watts coming or more probably more coming off my alternator while i'm driving to charge that it's at 50 amps like I say, electricity is proportional. And it, it isn't bad because you've got to be careful with these lithium batteries. You can't just throw a ton of amps at these things, man. You'll damage them. You'll kill the BMS system in that. The BMS system is designed to shut down burst, but if it were a big enough 
hit of, of amperage could burn that BMS system and it could kill that battery. So you just be very careful. It's, you know, a little bit different chemistry than an AGM battery. It really is. Um, and it's not bad. Now, you can, because charge controllers design, when they see the battery's full, they shut down and go to charge. They may loop back and go to your charger chassis battery. Well, my charge controller does that. It loops back and it'll charge my chassis battery or just go into state of idle and it'll just quit charging. No charge coming in once it's done and the battery's 100%. You can take a separate charge controller for your solar coming in if you want to do it and you can have a separate charge controller for your alternate. There's nothing wrong with that. Just be careful how you set all that up and just know what you're doing. But that's the point is, is make sure guys be careful what you're doing on your electrical systems. Um, I've said this once and I'll say it again. I think the all-in-one systems are the way of the future. Whether it be these packs like my Energy Apex or Titan um, you know, that you can put in your cigarette lighter and charge or put solar to. Uh, that Volta system, the Lithionics, they're all in one. Batteries, inverters, everything is there and you can expand upon the Lithionics system from what James said last night. Volta, not at that point yet. But why would you want it? 800 amp hours of battery is a massive, I had no idea that it had that much battery capacity. It explains why when they build a soft start off the, the inverter that the vans can, it'll run a regular rooftop AC and it'll auto crank to charge it and keep it trickled while it's doing this. This is what the Heimer active vans used to do. And uh, which they still do but they don't make them anymore. But it explains that you got to have more than a couple hundred amp hours to do something like that. You know? And like I say your battery capacity in your inverter it depends on what you can do with inverters so in other words i've got a 3500 watt inverter and 200 amp hours of battery but i can't run my microwave and my ac at the same time now it's a 12 volt ac and i know what you're thinking well you can still handle it's 12 volt ac and that microwave is what 1200 watts it's not the ac you're worried about it's both are pulling a bunch of DC current off that battery. Now, if I had 1,000, 800 to 1,000 amp hours of battery, it wouldn't undertow and it wouldn't be a problem. You could run those two at the same time. It wouldn't be beef. Shoot, you probably could run the AC and an induction cooktop and that microwave briefly in the middle of it, you know, momentarily. Um, because there's only so much one battery, even the 200 amp hour battery can take with a draw of current. And I say a draw of current, how much of a load that you can put at one time because you have to understand that what when you have the ac running and it's pulling let's say it's pulling 27 amps at about 200 watts you turn on that microwave and there's another 1200 watts there's 1500 watts but there's a current pull off that battery a dc current it's pulled a heavier amount of current and it's divided it so in other words you put a heavier load but it's divided it so the workload is put on heavier workload on that battery. I don't want to get too technical, but in other words, the battery is not able to handle that much pull of uh, current off that battery, that small of a battery for all those devices. So you want to be careful. It's not that big a deal. Most RVs, you got to run the microwave and turn the AC off. Anyway, I had to do it in my RV in my Winnebago. I had to turn the air conditioning off to run the microwave because I only had, uh, I had a 2800 watt generator and you're looking at 1500 watts a side, 3000 is way too much. You know, you get away with about 30 seconds, but something, it can undertow and cut the AC off. But you could pull and damage uh, components. You could, well, blow a fuse for starters, but you could damage that generator, you know? So you just have to understand the proportions of electricity and what they're, they're able to handle. How much load they can take at one time based on your battery capacity and your inverter. Um, in a nutshell, if you're not familiar with electricity, get help. Let somebody install this for you and help you understand what, you know, know what you're capable of doing. Just understand this stuff and be very careful because it can be very dangerous too if you're not careful. But anyway, I want to get on and rap about that. Um, I appreciate you guys watching as always. And I'm still looking Friday morning to head out for a few days, take a little trip, try to document as much of it as I can. But until then, be cool. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.